Recently, there's been a bunch of gameplay and gameplay details dropping for the next upcoming From Software title. If you don't already know, the makers of Sekiro and Elden Ring are reviving the Armored Core series. It's going to be a soft reboot that doesn't throw away the lore of the old games, but does take place in a brand new setting, so it's more welcoming for people new to the series looking to set out into their first Armored Core game. So drop a like down below if we're hooking you up with all of this information, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next update from us here on the channel. We already know that Armored Core 6 will take place on Rubicon 3, where inhabitants are fighting over control of a substance called Coral. In addition to this, we know that Coral is an extremely powerful energy source, but in prior years to the game taking place, Coral was also one of the reasons for the planet experiencing a catastrophic event. In Armored Core 6, we'll be playing as a Raven who's a mercenary pilot that undertakes various different jobs on Rubicon 3, and this is because the planet has a number of dangerous large factions fighting over control of the Coral resource on this planet. This is simply because it's such a valuable power source. In the mission shown in gameplay, the mission objective is to get to a huge facility called Grid 086. Within the facility though, there are dozers using the coral and even arms dealers that are going to impede our path. Unlike Elden Ring, Armored Core 6 will not be an open world game, but previewers have mentioned that these stages are very large and there are multiple paths to take through a mission. You can kind of see this through various bridges and structures that the player is flying by. The developers themselves during previews have said that they wanted the game to focus on having 3D level design with a sense of scale as one of their core pillars. And talking about pillars for the core concepts of the game, they have expanded on the core pillars that they want to focus on for the game. They say the game will have 3D level design with a sense of scale. There will be assembly and battle design which is customizing your mechs and experiencing a sense of accomplishment through overcoming difficulties. One of the developers also said, quote, our aim is to create a new mech action by the current From Software, which combines the fundamental fan aspects of the Armored Core series with the design philosophy of the recent From Software games. One of the things that's a large part of Armored Core is building out your mech to function to your preference and take on enemies for a particular mission. It looks like in Armored Core 6 they've also improved the way that flying works as you can build your mech to fly very effectively, but previewers have said that the energy consumption was higher for vertical flight than horizontal flight. This is actually similar to how it was in previous Armored Core games, so horizontal flight is more effective in this game. In addition, in addition to this, you get access to something called Assault Boost, which sort of functions like a dodge boost, but the Assault Boost can be held to gain even more distance, allowing you to fly for longer periods of time. Producer Yasunori Ogura, within the behind the scenes closed door previews, reinforced that the Assault Boost wasn't only for traversal, but also for combat. In previous videos on the channel, we also spoke about how Armored Core 6 will have stagger mechanics, which is our personal favorite game mechanic, but now we know a bit more about how it works exactly. So far from the gameplay we've seen and previews, there will be an impact gauge that will require you as the player to build up damage on that enemy, which will then create a stagger window where you can deal some good damage. The developers have said that in keeping with previous Armored Core games and from software games in general, that they want it to be a challenging game where players will have to use different tools at their disposal to overcome challenges and one of the things that we learned from the previews is that players will be able to take on these challenges with a wide array of weapons available to you. There's an arsenal of close to mid-range weapons like multi-lock-on rockets, close-range energy swords, spray bullets and more. Looking at the previews and articles from the game, there's a more controversial change to this new Armored Core title and that's the lock-on system which now functions similarly to more modern games that have lock systems systems and it nearly perfectly tracks the target. In previous Armored Core games, players still had to track their target manually slightly before the lock-on or targeted weapons would become effective. Lots of fans of the older games are basically saying that by removing this little bit of manual tracking, it's taking away some magic of the game. Although this makes sense in the name of accessibility, it does add to the question when multiplayer is considered what this means as it takes away player skill in their tracking. We also know that Armored Core 6 will be a challenging game with massive bosses and challenges to navigate, so there will be a lot of defeated players, but the game does have several things that will help you overcome these challenges, such as the scan function that has become super popular in more modern games. This will help you to detect enemies and plan your next encounter out. There will also be supply points throughout longer missions that allow you to resupply and get things like repair kits that will heal your mech and resupply your ammo too. But you might be wondering what happens if you get clapped in Armored Core 6 and lose your mech. Well, you're simply returned to the nearest 
checkpoints, and from there you will be able to customize your mech to adapt to whatever just defeated you. To quote the developers, they say, players need to think about which weapon to use to aim to stagger the enemy, and which weapon to damage it with. Assembly is a place where you can enjoy experimenting with your own unique coordinated effects. Well, customization is definitely back in a big way, and you'll be able to choose your perfect mech for you and what you plan to take out on each mission. There'll be a lot of variety when building out your mech from both internal parts and external ones. The internal parts impact your mech's systems and power, while external parts can be attached to your arms and legs to make your very own walking tank. We've also learnt that players will be able to attach a total number of four weapons on each hand and shoulder, so there should be some crazy looking machines out there once we get our hands on the game. But if you want to see some of the latest gameplay footage for Armored Core 6, then don't worry, we've got you hooked up here. But I do also want to know what type of mech are you looking forward to making? Put your ideas down in the comments below. And well, here's the latest gameplay for you to check out.